So guys, the next thing I'm gonna cover is our second point, and that's working with flash at night and, and doing night photos with flash. Um, there's some amazing flash techniques that I've learned over the years, in, including pointing the flash at either left or right, depending on where the person's nose is facing, to illuminate a certain side of their face, to create shadows and create depth and dimension in a photo. And we can do that whether it's outside in the dark or even at a reception or even for a dark and moody portrait. That will work really, really well. But for, for the purposes of getting creative um, and, and getting out there with those night photos, I want to run through uh, just some, some details around the flash and, and using backlighting and that sort of thing. So um, there's a couple of photos that are sort of running through on the screen at the moment. So uh, there's a couple with rain um, and then some really good just nice close up intimate shots with a couple using a flash from behind. So how I've achieved that is basically I have these remote triggers. Um, one is right here on the bottom of the flash and I have the other one right here in my hand which would connect straight onto the top of your, your camera. So basically what these remote triggers do, and I'll just turn them both on, <clears throat> basically the item that goes on the top of your camera, when you press the shutter down, it remotely triggers the receiver to set your flash off. So I can press the button on this trigger and the flash will go off. Now, I've got some really great and very cheap uh, Yong Young Nuo units here. Um, there is a lot of different units you can buy. I, I would urge you to, to do a little bit of homework, do a little bit of testing, um, and see which one suits you. There is, there's items that are purely manual, so in order to actually use them, you can only change your settings manually on your flash. And then there's other units like Pocket Wizards as well that are really, really great that you can actually change all of your settings via your camera or via the sender unit that's on top of your camera. So if you've got a flash that's a long way away, you don't have to run backwards and forwards to, uh, to adjust it, to adjust the intensity of it. So um, what I want to share with you now is, is uh, the flash or the backlighting technique that I've learnt. Um, this is purely my preference, so please try any other options that you guys feel that you want to try. But for me, this has worked the best and um, this has generated a lot of amazing photos for me. So basically, I, I shoot a lot of weddings, so we'll, we'll base this example on, on a wedding scenario. Um, there's a photo up on the screen now where I had a couple, it was raining, they had an umbrella. I got Tegan to light them up from the front um, with my constant light. So in this case, this is the ice light. Um, got her to light them up with this from the front and then I basically set the camera up and took the photo and the, the flash triggered from behind and the backlight actually lit up all the rain and lit up their umbrella, umbrella for them, which looked absolutely amazing. So the way that we actually did that was I had this flash on a stand. I placed this flash about the groom's height. So if you can imagine the groom's about a meter and a half tall, I placed that flash a meter and a half behind him and I placed it behind his head and I placed it so that the flash was aiming directly at him. So why do we do that? Well, when the flash is pointing directly at the groom, I can just shuffle the groom just slightly forward, just about an inch in front of the bride, and then slightly turn his face towards me a little bit. So then when the flash hits him, the flash bounces off his skin, illuminates the bride's face a little bit, and as well as illuminating the whole scene. So what we've done is we've set the flash up, as I said, about a meter and a half behind the groom, at his head height, pointing straight at him, and I've set the camera off, and we got that amazing photo. Now, the thing to remember um, with taking those night photos is we need a relatively high ISO to be able to do that and to expose properly because we are using, as I said, um, a constant light in the foreground. The flash will light up the background and unless you have a reflector or, or some kind of lighting or, or bouncing device in front of you that can bounce a bit of that backlight back towards them, then you will need uh, a constant light or an LED of some description. So. With that LED, um, we've, we've lit them up at its capacity from the front. Um, I've set the camera to uh, about 800 ISO, which on the new, on the 5D Mark III's is, is quite acceptable. Um, and a lot of other cameras, it, it, we don't start getting a lot of noise because uh, sensors are so good now till up around sort of 2,500 ISO. 
So basically what we've done is we've set the camera up at about 800 ISO. Um, I'm still high hand holding the camera, so I'm using my 70 to 200 2.8 lens. Um, and we've set the, from memory I believe, the um, shutter speed to about 60 to 80. I think it was about 80 for that particular shot. Um, with my aperture setting at about 3.2. So I don't want to have it at 2.8 so that everything is kind of blurred and on all those um, little rays of, of, or little spots of rain sort of blow out and become too blurry. I still want a little bit of clarity in that shot, but I need to try and balance that with being able to expose it properly and, and not requiring a tripod. So in order to do that, guys, you need a high ISO. Um, I wouldn't recommend that you try and handhold any type of shot or anything like that that's under about 60 to 40 um, on the shutter speed um, unless you can sort of control your breathing and, and be nice and still in doing it. So um, for a shot like that it's it's very easy with a bit of constant light at the front to, to use a, a shutter speed of about 60 to, to 80 um, and still get an amazing effect from it. So guys I, um, I hope that this has all sort of helped you a little bit and, and inspired you to maybe get out and do uh, some of those night photos for yourself. Um, just remember, you'll, you'll need a tripod, that is absolutely for certain, for doing this light painting stuff. So head on down to the guys at TED's, they have uh, a whole swag of tripods down there for you. So um, I hope that you enjoyed this and I uh, look forward to speaking to you again soon. Mm -hmm.